Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. Today, we'll talk about one of the most beloved characters from the universe of Mortal Kombat, Liu Kang. Fans of Mortal Kombat will never forget the bravery with which Liu Kang and his fellow warriors defended Earthrealm. Players adore Liu Kang primarily because of his well-balanced style, which focuses on quick yet powerful punches and kicks. Additionally, both players and opponents enjoyed his trademark dragonfire and flying dragon kick, but Liu Kang has more to offer fans than only his uniform and his recognizable appearance. So, sit tight and stick with us as we take a look at the origin story of our favorite Shaolin monk from the Mortal Kombat world. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin! Who was Liu Kang inspired from? Before we get into Liu Kang's narrative, we must know who is the inspiration behind this character. According to franchise character designer and co-creator John Tobias, Mortal Kombat's main character was initially supposed to go by the name Minamoto Yoshitsune. This name appears to have been inspired by Minamoto no Yoshitsune, an army general who rose to fame as one of Japan's most illustrious samurai during the feudal era. Sadly, the rest of the team didn't connect with the name. Additionally, this protagonist would be a typical monk with a beard and robes instead of being a samurai. The design team abandoned the original Yoshitsune's traditional monk look, and Liu Kang's appearance came to resemble Bruce Lee. This contained Bruce Lee's well-known topless appearance and his slick style. In fact, Liu Kang's origin was even influenced by Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon. Bruce Lee's characteristics, such as making sounds while striking quickly, are also imitated by Liu Kang. Here's a fun fact. Liu Kang is the second character inspired by Bruce Lee in a combat game. Kim Dragon from the arcade combat game World Heroes is the first character to hold this honor. Now that that's out of the way, it's time to dive into the backstory of Liu Kang. History of Liu Kang Liu Kang is one of the series' most popular and easy-to-play characters. He's one of Earthrealm's best fighters, having defeated numerous opponents to demonstrate his bravery. Throughout the series, he's gradually been presented as the primary hero, eventually becoming champion following the first Mortal Kombat tournament. Liu Kang was revealed to be non-violent in the first installment of the series, as his finisher did not graphically murder the opponent. However, beginning with Mortal Kombat 2, all his fatalities became more brutal. In the first game, we see Liu Kang Kang was orphaned as a youngster and taken in by the Order of Light Shaolin Temple, which is concealed in the mountains of Honan Province in China. Liu Kang's ability in martial arts drew Lord Raiden's notice after training in the teachings of the great Kung Lao. Raiden viewed the young warrior monk as Earthrealm's final chance and brought Liu Kang to meet the famed outworld martial arts teacher Bo Rai Cho to enhance the young Shaolin's growth. Cho was the one to teach Liu Kang the Liu Kang trademark flying kick. After several years of training, Liu Kang was accepted into the top secret White Lotus Society, an organization of warriors founded by Raiden to defend the Earthrealm. As the tenth generation of the Mortal Kombat tournament neared, Shaolin Grandmaster Wu called Liu Kang, who was sent by the Temple of Light to fight Shang Tsung. He wished to defeat Shang Tsung and reclaim the tournament for the Shaolins. On his way to the competition, he met and became friends with a special forces agent called Sonya Blade and a movie star named Johnny Cage. Anyway, Outworld had claimed nine Mortal Kombat tournaments in succession at the time of Liu Kang's arrival. It's unknown who Kang Kang faced during the tournament, but he finally gained the privilege of battling Goro, the current Mortal Kombat champion. Liu Kang overcame Goro and became the next champion by taking advantage of the Shokan's arrogance. Next in line was Shang Tsung. After a tremendous battle, Liu Kang defeated Shang Tsung with his flying kick. The island self-destructed as a result of Shang Tsung's defeat. After that, Liu Kang returned home as the new Mortal Kombat champion. In the next game, when Lao returned from Tsung's island, he discovered that many of his Shaolin brothers had been slaughtered in a terrible Takatan onslaught. Enraged, Liu Kang sought vengeance in Outworld, accompanied by Raiden Smoke, Sub-Zero, who was the younger brother of the original Sub-Zero and his fellow White Lotus comrade and spiritual brother Kung Lao. But before traveling to Outworld, Liu Kang made one more stop in Hollywood to seek the assistance of Johnny Cage. Fortunately, Liu Kang arrived just as Cage was being ambushed by a Takatan horde. They ultimately traveled to Outworld with Cage and Sonya's boss Jax Briggs. He and Kung Lao encountered Katana at the competition, and 
Liu Kang fell in love with her. He ultimately discovered the actual nature of the Outworld competition, but he still competed. While it is unknown what matches occurred, Liu Kang faced Shao Kahn and finally defeated the Emperor. He most certainly battled Kintaro and Shang Tsung as well, defeating the latter despite his youth and increased powers, and this time in front of Shao Kahn himself. Unwilling to accept defeat, Khan directed his men to annihilate the Earthrealm warriors, compelling them to return home and prepare for the impending invasion. When Liu Kang and Kung Lao returned to Earthrealm in Mortal Kombat 3, they started coaching a young crop of Shaolin warriors, only to be halted when the invasion began. As Khan's extermination squads were dispatched to eliminate Earth's chosen warriors, Liu Kang became the prime target. However, Kung Lao opposed Shao Kahn and was apparently murdered by the Emperor's intense explosion. Enraged, Liu Kang challenged Khan to another round of Mortal Kombat and beat him, forcing the Emperor and his army to escape back to Outworld. The souls captured by Khan were freed, and right before the gate closed, Kitana praised Liu Kang for his role in freeing both Earth and her own realm from Shao Kahn. In the fourth installment of the game, Liu Kang went to America to train a new generation of Shaolin fighters. He ran across his old acquaintance Kai while in America. The two then returned to China, where Kai was trained to be a Shaolin warrior by Liu Kang. The tranquility, however, was short-lived since the fallen elder god Shinnok fled from the Netherrealm via a conduit to Adenia. When Liu Kang learned that Katana had been kidnapped, he headed out on his own to rescue her, but he was unsuccessful. Liu Kang returned to Earth and began gathering Earth soldiers in order to preserve Earth and help his master, Raiden. Liu Kang eventually met the fallen elder god Shinnok and defeated him, ending his invasion of Earth. After that, Liu Kang returned to the Shaolin temples, convinced that he'd lost Kitana for good. The Adenian princess, on the other hand, emerged via a portal from Adenia and praised Liu Kang for everything he'd done. She invited him to join her on the throne of Adenia. Liu Kang, however, was obliged to deny her offer, owing to his obligations as a mortal combat champion. Despite his feelings for Kitana, he had to do what he thought was right. Next, Liu Kang lived in relative tranquility for many years. The Deadly Alliance, on the other hand, would leave its mark on Earth with the effective assassination of Liu Kang. Shang Tsung disguised himself as Kung Lao and approached the champion as he practiced his katas. After being beaten down by Liu Kang, Shang Tsung was helped by Quan Chi, who harmed Liu Kang by striking him in the rear with a projectile while Kang was concentrating on Shang Tsung. Shang Tsung took advantage of the diversion and snapped Liu Kang's neck, eating his soul immediately after that. In Mortal Kombat Deception, Raiden unleashed his godlike essence to destroy Onaga, killing both Quan Chi and Shang Tsung in the process. These events were viewed by Liu Kang via the eyes of Shang Tsung. While it's uncertain if Quan Chi and Shang Tsung genuinely perished, it's been confirmed that the thousands of souls swallowed by Tsung in the past, including Liu Kang's, were freed. In addition, after being corrupted during his reformation, Raiden revived Liu Kang's body with malicious intent and let it loose on the Shaolin monks, killing many of them. Meanwhile, Liu Kang's soul chose to remain in Outworld to aid the struggle against Onaga, but he soon found his body's resurrection and was horrified by what he'd done. Although Liu Kang wasn't technically accountable, he couldn't help but feel guilty for his corpse's acts. He also learnt about his colleagues and how Onaga had enslaved them. Liu Kang then enlisted the help of the enigmatic ninja Ermac and had two assignments to fulfill. The first was to try to save his comrades from Onaga, and the second was to vanquish and prevent his body from causing additional damage. Liu Kang was well aware that Onaga had duped Shu Jinko into obtaining the Kamidogu. Still, Liu Kang eagerly taught Shu Jinko his tactics to assist him. After that, Liu Kang headed off to continue his assignments with Ermac. He successfully rescued his companions from Onaga's servitude and had an emotional reunion with those closest to him, including his lifelong love, Kitana. After parting ways with his buddies, Liu Kang set out to complete his most challenging task, which is to reconnect with his body. In Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Kitana was escorted by the ghost of Liu Kang. Because of their close relationship, she could preserve his energy until a means of reuniting his body and spirit were discovered. Nightwolf accepted the position of Liu Kang's new spiritual anchor and transferred the tie from Kitana to himself. But Liu Kang's corpse still harbors resentment toward his killer and arch enemy, Shang Tsung. His corpse ultimately caught up with Shang Tsung and held him in position with his hooks despite Shang Tsung obtaining the advantage and ascending the Pyramid of Argus. Shang Tsung became his older self once more as a result of this. By the end of the Battle of Armageddon, neither Nightwolf nor Liu Kang's body had survived. Liu Kang's soul was compelled to die after Nightwolf's passing since it had lost its connection to the corporeal world. In the original timeline, Liu Kang appears one last time in the game Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, which was also one of the last games released by Midway Games before the company was sold to Warner Brothers, who rebranded it to NetherRealm Studios. The story's peculiar scenario provided the sense 
sense of a what-if situation. Although not chronological, the game is canon to the Mortal Kombat storyline. Following Shao Kahn's abortive invasion of Earthrealm, Liu Kang briefly returned to Wuxi Academy. His fellow White Lotus monks soon started mysteriously disappearing one by one. One day, while in deep thought, Liu Kang noticed Katana trying to sneak up on him. Katana's kick was easily parried. After catching up, Katana alerts Liu Kang of her fellow Adenian soldier's absence. Katana learns through Liu Kang that the White Lotus is in a similar situation. After they speculate about potential suspects, they come to the conclusion that Lin Kuei and the Black Dragon are the only groups left who are brave enough to do such a thing. While he looks for Sub-Zero, Liu Kang instructs Katana to get in touch with Sonya Blade for assistance in locating the Black Dragon. Soon, Sub-Zero attacks Liu Kang, but to no avail. Sub-Zero blames the forces of light for the disappearance of his own companions. Liu Kang claims his innocence and says that his own allies have also disappeared. After saving the Cryomancer from Scorpion's rope dart and informing Sub-Zero that they share an enemy, Liu Kang gains Sub-Zero's trust. After defeating Scorpion, Liu Kang marvels as the Spectre gets absorbed by an unknown energy and transforms into a red-clad person. Despite the newcomer's astonishment, Liu Kang believes he's fighting the shapeshifter Shang Tsung and engages in combat with him, ultimately winning. Liu Kang takes the stranger to his masters to further understand his origins after realizing that he is not Shang Tsung and seeing his alien aura. When Liu Kang returns to the Wuxi Academy and is unable to find his instructors, Shang Tsung confronts him and admits to having slain them. Although Liu Kang defeats Shang Tsung in battle once more, he doesn't kill him and instead leaves his soul to the Elder God's wrath. Soon after, Sonya Blade contacts Liu Kang and he alerts her to the potential new danger driving the disappearances. Liu Kang explains the warrior's peculiar aura and assures Sonya he'll attempt to attune to it despite her reservations. When Liu Kang tries to tune in to the warrior's aura, the same mysterious force that swallowed Scorpion prevents him and he disappears. In an alternate dimension, Liu Kang arrives in Gotham City and is welcomed by Batman, the city's guardian. Infected by the newly emerging combat rage, Liu Kang fights the Dark Knight, mistaking him for Shang Tsung, but loses. Batman took an unconscious Liu Kang to the UN orbital station and imprisoned him there, but Raiden quickly freed him. He then brought Liu Kang to his temple, where they broke up a brawl between Jax, Briggs, and Sonya. As soon as Liu Kang informs his companions of his captivity, Raiden briefs them on the latest universe merging theory. Raiden is alongside Liu Kang as Sub-Zero is reprimanded by the Thunder God for letting Quan Chi leave the Netherrealm. Then Katana, under Quan Chi's control, appears. Quan Chi releases Katana from the Rage's grip using the last of his magic. He then begs Raiden to join his forces of light and darkness to halt the merging and preserve all the realms. Liu Kang hesitantly accepts when Raiden assigns him to work alongside Shang Tsung and sends them to examine the citadel of the invader's leader. Green Lantern and Superman face them there. Liu Kang overcomes the Green Lantern as Tsung battles Superman. The partnership between Liu Kang and Shang Tsung becomes strained when Liu Kang is overcome by combat rage as Shang Tsung mocks the masters he slew before, attacking the sorcerer, but is defeated by a revitalized Shang Tsung. The weaker Kang is knocked out by a combat rage bolstered Green Lantern, though he is defeated by Shang Tsung in the end. Liu Kang thanks Tsung for saving his life, but the sorcerer dismisses it and they return to Raiden's temple. Following his return, Liu Kang joins the unified forces of light and darkness amid the ruins of the merged outworld Apocalypse Cosmos, where they are attacked by DC Universe heroes and villains. Dark Khan's appearance infects everyone there with combat rage, and the two factions clash, with Liu Kang facing up against Green Lantern, emerging triumphant, one of the few combatants still standing when the conflict finishes. When a rage-affected Raiden attempts to kill Shang Tsung, Liu Kang approaches and unwillingly confronts his guru. When Raiden beats him, Liu Kang falls incapacitated, which both Raiden and Shang Tsu misinterpret as Raiden murdering him, snapping Raiden out of his fury and allowing him to face Dark Khan. After Dark Khan's annihilation, Liu Kang would recover consciousness and witness the restoration of the two realities. That concludes Liu Kang's story from the original timeline. In Mortal Kombat 9, released in 2011, the timeline was revamped. So, in the current revamped timeline, when Liu Kang first meets Raiden, he's preparing for the inaugural Mortal Kombat tournament. He's with Raiden as they approach Johnny Cage, and he's visibly angered when Johnny Cage insults Raiden. Liu Kang reappears as Raiden describes the Mortal Kombat tournament circumstances to Sonya and Jax. He's taken aback when he discovers that Kung Lao has slipped into the competition. Kung Lao is defeated by Scorpion, and Liu Kang assists him in his recovery. When Ermac is revealed to be the newest invention of Shao Kahn, Liu Kang makes his first battling appearance. Even though Liu Kang was never depicted fighting in the tournament, Shang Tsung claims that he's the only Earthrealm warrior standing. Liu Kang overcomes Ermac and afterward appears to be practicing with Raiden. Raiden receives another 
message from his future self, stating that the He Must Win character must be Liu Kang. Soon, Kitana approaches Liu Kang after Raiden has left and attempts to murder him. Liu Kang eventually defeats her. When Kitana orders Liu Kang to murder her for failing to assassinate him, he refuses, claiming that their meeting never occurred. Liu Kang then overcomes both Scorpion and Quan Chi in a two-on-one duel. He's then escorted to Goro's lair to face him. Liu Kang comes to Shang Tsung's throne room after beating Goro, where he meets Shang Tsung. Liu Kang is acclaimed as Earthrealm's hero after overcoming Shang Tsung. Afterward, a celebration at the Wuxi Academy is organized to commemorate Liu Kang's Mortal Kombat tournament triumph. As darkness falls, a resurrected Shang Tsung and a horde of Tarkatans storm the Academy. When Jax awakens, Liu Kang is among the Earthrealm soldiers who describe the newest scenario to him, along with Sonya's captivity. As Raiden, Johnny Cage, and Jax resume the new Mortal Kombat tournament, it's discovered that Liu Kang and Kung Lao have been dispatched to release their Shaolin Masters. When contacted by Jade, Liu Kang emerges alongside Johnny Cage, Smoke, Raiden, and Kung Lao. Liu Kang learns about Kitana's abduction and captivity during the chat. After a lengthy disagreement with Raiden over what to do, Liu Kang and Kung Lao proceed to the tower in search of Kitana. They find Kitana has been relocated and are attacked by Shiva and Noob Saibot. Liu Kang fights Shiva, while Kung Lao fights Noob Saibot and finally Goro, who after being defeated by Kung Lao, informs the two that Kitana was most likely executed in the Colosseum. Hearing this, Liu Kang got enraged and knocked Goro unconscious. On the other hand, Kung Lao believed Kitana was still alive and they both rushed to the Colosseum. Liu Kang seeks to free Kitana from her incarceration after discovering she's still alive. Meanwhile, Kung Lao pushes forward and assumes the role of he must win, as prophesied earlier. But Shao Kahn murders Kung Lao by cracking his neck after he overcomes Shang Tsung and Quan Chi in a two-on-one combat and Kintaro shortly after. This enrages both Raiden and Liu Kang. Liu Kang confronts, beats, and seems to kill Shao Kahn with a scorching blow. Following Shao Kahn's alleged death, Liu Kang, along with Kitana and Raiden, mourn the loss of Kung Lao. However, Shao Kahn is revealed to live, declaring that he can't be destroyed that easily and having his wounds repaired by Quan Chi. Shao Kahn's deceased wife, Sindel, is resurrected on Earth also by Quan Chi, allowing Shao Kahn to attack Earthrealm. After that, Raiden is accompanied to the Elder Gods by Liu Kang. They try to persuade the Elder Gods to intervene and stop Shao Kahn, but they reject them. When they return to Earthrealm, practically all the Earthrealm soldiers are dead, and Nightwolf sacrificed himself to murder Queen Sindel. Kitana is in severe condition as Liu Kang goes to her aid. She eventually passes away from her injuries while still holding Liu Kang's hand. Liu Kang now gets very angry with Raiden now that the Earthrealm warriors have died. After his most recent offer to contact Quan Chi for assistance, Liu Kang believes Raiden has become mad and declines to travel with him to the Netherrealm. When Raiden comes from the Netherrealm and explains to Liu Kang that the phrase he must win is referred to Shao Kahn, Liu Kang disagrees to letting Shao Kahn prevail. He battles Raiden but is overpowered. Shao Kahn soon reaches Earthrealm, and Liu Kang attempts to stop him once more. Raiden prevents him from doing so by directing electrical bolts at him. Liu Kang, enraged, throws a fiery punch at Raiden, who protects himself with a bolt of lightning. Raiden's lightning, combined with Liu Kang's own flame, severely burned Liu Kang's body, almost killing him. Raiden, terrified, begs the terminally wounded Liu Kang to forgive him, but Liu Kang eventually dies. Liu Kang's body is hauled away by Johnny Cage, Sonya, and Raiden after Shao Kahn's final defeat at the hands of Raiden and the Elder Guards. Liu Kang appears next in Mortal Kombat X. He first appears in the narrative mode in Raiden's flashback to 25 years previously, when both Kung Lao and he were living before Shao Kahn's tournament in Outworld. Several monks were captured by Baraka and his Tarkatan army after the Wuxi Academy was overrun. Liu Kang embarks on an adventure with Raiden and Kung Lao to release the monks. The group ultimately discovers the monks being put onto a ship under Devorah's leadership. He fights alongside Kung Lao against the Tarkatan horde, as Raiden contends with both Baraka and Devorah. They go to release the monks aboard the first ship after beating their adversaries. Raiden then informs Liu Kang that he must return for the competition, leaving Liu Kang and Kung Lao to locate and rescue the surviving monks aboard the second ship, which has already left. Coming to the present timeline, Liu Kang, now an undead revenant servant of Quan Chi, is first seen in the Netherrealm. He rides to Quan Chi Citadel with the zombie revenant forms of Kung Lao, Kitana, and Sindel to await Devorah's arrival with Shinnok's amulet. As they approach the stronghold, Quan Chi and crew are attacked by the special forces headed 
by Jax and Kenshi, with the assistance of Serena. While the other revenants fight the special forces, Liu Kang fights his way out and brings Quan Chi to safety. As they approach the stronghold, they're pursued by Jax, who plans to return Quan Chi to the Earth Realm. Liu Kang tries to halt Jax, expressing his contempt for his decision to rejoin Raiden's side. Jax responds that Raiden tried his best and rescued Earth Realm, but Liu Kang rebuts that Raiden executed him and took everything from him. The two battle and Liu Kang is beaten, resulting in Quan Chi's capture. After Shinnok is liberated, Liu Kang comes to Earth Realm with Smoke, Katana, Sindel, and Kung Lao. Liu Kang then notifies Shinnok of the human influence in the Nether Realm, but Shinnok is unconcerned and states that they'll be eliminated later. Shinnok and Devorah, together with the prisoner Johnny Cage, are subsequently accompanied by Liu Kang and the other revenants to the Sky Temple, where Shinnok assaults Bol Rai Cho with his amulet. Raiden arrives shortly after to stop Shinnok, only to be encircled by revenants. Liu Kang requests that Raiden be killed, but Shinnok orders that he be allowed to live so he can seal Raiden himself. As Shinnok departs for the Jinsei, Liu Kang and the other revenants mock Raiden before the latter engages them. Raiden successfully electrocutes Smoke, Kitana, and Sindel before defeating Kung Lao. Liu Kang then confronts him. Raiden tries to reach out to his old pupil before their bout by reminding him that this is not his fate. Liu Kang responds cynically, asking Raiden if he still sees the future. He then reminds Raiden of his death at the hands of the latter. Raiden maintains it was an accident but Liu Kang praises Raiden for liberating him and expresses his willingness to assist Shinnok in overthrowing the Elder Gods. Afterward, Jacqueline Briggs, Takeda Takahashi, King Jin and Cassie Cage arrive in the Sky Temple and overhear Sindel, Devorah, Kitana and Liu Kang talking about Shinnok's plans to conquer Earthrealm and attack the heavens. Liu Kang departs with Smoke and Kung Lao in search of a means to get access to Raiden's doorway to the heavens. After Cassie defeats Kitana and Sindel, Liu Kang returns with Smoke and Kung Lao. Jackie and Takeda managed to keep Liu Kang and his zombie allies at bay long enough for Cassie to destroy Shinnok. After she defeats Shinnok and restores the Jinsei, Liu Kang returns to the Nether Realm with the other revenants. In the post credit sequence, Liu Kang and Katana are the crowned monarchs of the Nether Realm. Raiden shows up and threatens them by throwing the severed but still living head of Shinnok at them. Raiden, who has been corrupted after purging the Jinsei, announces that he'll no longer just protect Earthrealm and says that anybody who threatens Earthrealm will face fates worse than death. By the beginning of Mortal Kombat, at 11, Liu Kang had been further corrupted by Shinnok's influence and was plotting an invasion of Earthrealm. Raiden and the Special Forces execute a preemptive strike against the Bone Temple to thwart their onslaught. The Special Forces penetrate the temple to destroy it as Raiden battles the Netherrealm demons outside. While watching Raiden battle, Liu Kang learns he's the diversion and attempts to halt the Special Forces, but he and the others fail and the Bone Temple is destroyed. Liu Kang and Katana, believing everything is gone, surrender to their destiny before Kronika arrives. Liu Kang challenges Challenges her identity, and she just repairs the temple, enlisting the help of the revenants in her plots. Because of Kronika's temporal anomalies, the younger Liu Kang, before his death, is transported to the current era along with his friends and adversaries. Despite hearing what his modern counterpart has become, he continues to trust Raiden and joins forces with Earthrealm soldiers. Liu Kang bids Katana farewell before leaving for Earthrealm with Raiden and Kung Lao. Liu Kang and Kung Lao ultimately make their way to the Shaolin Monastery containing the Wuxi Dragon Grotto to prevent Kronika's soldiers from taking the Jinsei she craves. They face the former version of Scorpion and fight him and Jade after successfully evading the traps in the Shaolin Trap dungeon. They then enter the cave, where Geras is holding the Jinsei. Kung Lao expresses concern that they would collide with their Revenant selves, which proves true when Revenant Liu Kang and Kung Lao arrive to obstruct them. The Revenants insult their younger selves for believing Raiden, even though he was the cause of their deaths, but Liu Kang defends Raiden. Just as Kung Lao beats his Revenant counterpart, the youthful Liu Kang defeats the Revenant opponent as well, reflecting on how foolish he has become in the future. They subsequently fight and defeat Geras, but Kronika comes to a halt and reverses time to gather the Jinsei augments. After all of Earthrealm's bases have been compromised and both Kotal and Jade have been taken, the Shirai Ryu's Fire Garden is the last surviving base remaining, and Raiden is the single surviving god, who discovered that both Shinnok and Ceterion's true devotion is solely to their mother, Kronika. Liu Kang requests that Raiden send him and Kung Lao to rejoin Katana in Outworld, where he saves both Jade and Kotal from Shao Kahn and redeems Tarkatan's destiny on behalf of Shiva. Despite Shao Kahn hurting Kotal, Liu Kang and Kung Lao cheer as Katana ends Shao Kahn's horror with her own hands, and Kotal crowns her as the Khan of Outworld. 
Raiden eventually conflicts with Liu Kang as the former begins using Shinnok's amulet to force himself toward executing a redeemed past Scorpion whom he believes Kronika sent after him. At the same time, Liu Kang represents Scorpion's genuine redemption because the latter's late present human self had sent him. Amid the conflict, the Thunder God relents and assists Scorpion before telling a perplexed Liu Kang that Kronika has been influencing them to fight. Raiden states that he and Liu Kang would battle in every timeline, with Liu Kang dying in every one of them. Following the discovery, Raiden cures Scorpion and refuses to remain the goddess's puppet which pleases Liu Kang. However, Kronika abducts the young Kang so his Revenant counterpart can ingest his soul and battle Raiden again, killing him. Soon after, the Revenant attacks Raiden, who defeats him after a protracted battle, but instead of killing the evil counterpart as the latter had anticipated, Raiden merges himself and past Liu Kang's deceased body with the Revenant Kang, turning them both into Fire God Liu Kang, with the former Liu Kang's consciousness ruling because he had also absorbed the memories of the latter. Liu Kang can now defeat Kronika and her army thanks to his newly acquired heavenly skills, knowledge of the hourglass, and understanding of her strategy. Beginning their attack on Kronika's keep, the forces of Earthrealm and Outworld decimate many legions thanks to Liu Kang's newly discovered talents. Once inside, though, Kronika turns back time and sends Liu Kang's pals back to Karon's ship, leaving Liu Kang on his own to fight his friend's revenant counterparts. Kung Lao, Jade, and Katana, the three revenants, are ultimately defeated by Liu Kang. Then he engages Cetrion in combat and triumphs. Then Kronika goes back in time one last time to the Paleolithic era. Their conflict had taken them back in time to the beginning. Fortunately, Liu Kang was able to beat her by turning her to glass and destroying her entire body, including her crown. Raiden is split from Liu Kang, making Kang a god and himself a mortal, basically switching roles. During his meeting with Raiden, the former Thunder God bestows on Liu Kang the titles of Defender of Earthrealm and Keeper of Time. When Liu Kang describes the work as difficult to do alone, Raiden recommends counseling him for the rest of his life. Liu Kang agrees, and the sands of time begin to be shifted by them. As the new Keeper of Time, Liu Kang uses the hourglass to create a new history with Raiden, but is halted by the unexpected entrance of Fujin, the human Nightwolf, and Shang Tsung. They told him that using the hourglass without Kronika's crown would ultimately shatter it, and they were right when Liu Kang used it to see what would happen next. He conferred with Fujin before sending the three back in time, just as Katana was about to liberate Kotal Khan and become the Khan of Outworld. The Fire God knew Shang Tsung would ultimately gain the throne and seize control of the hourglass, betraying and exploiting everyone around him as pawns in his chess game until he delivered his checkmate. Liu Kang would delay his preparations until Shang's victory occurred, opting to sacrifice all of his friends' lives for the greater benefit of providing them with a more peaceful and brighter future in a new timeline he would establish. Meanwhile, after the trio lands in the Netherrealm, the Revenant Liu Kang binds them with an amulet and orders his accomplices to take them as prisoners to Shinnok's Bone Temple. He appears again in the last chapter, poised to fight Raiden before his legs are shattered due to Shao Kahn's harm to his prior self. In this scenario, Liu Kang is not kidnapped by Kronika, but he is present when Raiden almost becomes Dark Raiden one more time and takes the ferry to Kronika's Isle with Kotal Khan, Kung Lao, Katana, and Jade. When the boat is ambushed by Shao Kahn's soldiers, Liu Kang confronts and defeats Shao Kahn. When the outworld couple drops his and Katana's bodies, Liu Kang tries to stretch his hand to Katana's, but Shao Kahn steps on Liu Kang's hand just as their hands are about to connect. Shao Kahn subsequently cripples Liu Kang's legs rendering his current and revenant self incapable of avenging himself against Raiden, turning them both paraplegic. Fire God Liu Kang arrives in the last chapter's climax to prevent the sorcerer from taking over Kronika's role. It is revealed that he permitted Shang Tsung to advance as he did for the latter to win the throne at the expense of his companions, but pledged to the sorcerer that his friends would live again in his new era rather than the sorcerers. The player then has the option of playing as or fighting Fire God Liu Kang. If you choose Shang Tsung, the sorcerer overcomes Liu Kang and chokes him while mocking his failure. Shang Tsung then swallows his soul, leaving his desiccated corpse behind. If you choose Liu Kang, he draws temporal energy from the hourglass and attacks Shang Tsung. Liu Kang reaches out to the sorcerer as his body slowly disintegrates into sand dust, scooping up Kronika's crown and creating a new era. Following the changeover, a white lotus temple is visible, with Shaolin monks exercising hard. A great Kung Lao is seen making his statue in a chamber. The young monk is startled when fire god Liu Kang appears in front of him. When Liu Kang states that he is a god, the great Kung Lao is embarrassed and humbly meets him, with Liu Kang observing that the great Kung Lao, unlike his reincarnation, is modest. The game concludes with Liu Kang declaring that it's time to push him to practice because he's the fire god's chosen warrior.
Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat film 1995. The 1995 action film directed by Paul Anderson was widely regarded as the first significant triumph for video game movie adaptations, arriving a year after the critically panned Street Fighter and two years after the catastrophic Super Mario Brothers. Robin Shu, a martial artist and actor, was brought in to portray Liu Kang. His interpretation provided an edge and the character arc to the generally bland figure. The plot is taken from the original Mortal Kombat game, where the Outworld has won nine consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments. So from Earth, former Shaolin monk Liu Kang and his companions, Hollywood action star Johnny Cage and Special Agent Lieutenant Sonya Blade must risk their lives and defeat their formidable opponents in order to win the 10th Mortal Kombat tournament and save the planet Earth from eternal damnation. Although each warrior was chosen by the demon sorcerer Shang Tsung to engage in Mortal Kombat, everyone has their unique motivation for doing so. Liu Kang is seeking revenge for Shang Tsung's killing of his younger brother who was slain in battle. He viewed this murder in his dreams. Next, Shang Tsung greets the combatants of the realm of Earth with a feast upon their arrival on the island and the tournament's opening rounds begin the next day. Shang Tsung, however, expresses to Goro, the Mortal Kombat champion, his concern that Liu Kang is taking part in the competition and that the Emperor's stepdaughter, Princess Katana, could betray them by siding with the people of Earth. Initially, the Earth realm combatants outperformed Shang Tsung's troops. Liu Kang defeated and killed Sub-Zero, Sonya defeated and killed Kano, and Johnny Cage defeated and killed Scorpion. On the other hand, Goro enters the competition and overcomes several opponents on his own, including Johnny Cage's comrade Art Lean, whose soul is captured by Shang Tsung. After the crushing setback, the three combatants are depressed until Raiden inspires them to conquer their worries and participate boldly in battle. Johnny Cage chooses to take on Goro himself in order to avenge his friend's death. Before facing Goro, Shang Tsung stipulates that he may choose to confront any one fighter at any time and at any location of his choice. Johnny Cage overcomes Goro and sends him tumbling off a cliff to his apparent death. Shang Tsung then abducts Sonya Blade, fulfilling his prior promise. Raiden informs Liu Kang and Johnny Cage that they must enter Outworld without him and that because Sonya Blade is incapable of defeating Shang Tsung in a fight, one of them must beat him in her place. Liu Kang eventually challenged Shang Tsung to Mortal Kombat in the Outworld. The closely fought conflict resulted in triumph for Liu Kang and the Realm of Earth, as well as the release of the souls of all the combatants who were killed in battle and had their souls absorbed, including Liu Kang's deceased brother whose name was Chan Kang from Shang Tsung's hands when he died. Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat film 2021. In this movie, Liu Kang first appears when Kano, Sonya Blade, and Cole Young are stopped by him as they attempt to go to Lord Raiden's temple. When Kano notices him, he pulls a knife out of suspicion, but Kang merely lashes out at him with fire and tells him that he's not his adversary. Sonya identifies him as a champion of Earthrealm when he announces himself as coming from the Shaolin Order of Light. Kano wonders if Kang's prowess with fire would also grant him abilities, but Liu pats him on the shoulder and reminds him that there is still much to learn. The gang is led to Raiden's temple by Liu Kang. He warns them that they have only a little time, but it's imperative that they start practicing for the next competition. He emphasizes that few Earth warriors remain and must practice harder to avoid being destroyed by their opponents. He explains that he has to assemble the champions, but it's too late for Jax Briggs, who is severely injured, resting in the temple. He then hands Sonya to Jax. She receives his assurance that they're making every effort to help him. The Thunder God, Lord Raiden, is not impressed when the champions are brought before him. He still consents to start his training and thwarts Shang Tsung's attempts to enter the temple. After introducing the warriors to Kung Lao, a grand champion of the Order of Light descendant, Liu Kang starts their training. He declines Sonya's request for training, claiming that a fighter without a dragon marking can never master their arcana and is, therefore, a liability. The testing of Cole and Kano by him and Lao does not go well for either of them. Cole is hurt during the training and, confused, asks Kang how he's meant to awaken his arcana. Kang advises him that it must originate within. Cole inquires as to how he came by his own arcana. He recounts that before being adopted and taken to the Wuxi Academy, he was merely a stray who was discovered in the gutter, half dead. He was given the name of an orphan trafficker after graduating. He could unlock his arcana by killing the man and stealing his marking. I had a marking, so I chose to take it from you. While Cole keeps having trouble, Kano is able to unlock his arcana as they continue their training. Kang claims that suffering is the ultimate catalyst, but when Cole keeps failing, Raiden sends him home to his family. The temple is then attacked by Shang Tsung's soldiers, who were brought in by Kano's betrayal. Kang is engaged in combat with Cabal, who taunts him by requesting that he move more slowly. After defeating Goro and unlocking his arcana, Cole is taken in by Raiden again. Shang Tsung drains Lao's soul as retribution. Cole restrains Kang as he watches in terror as 
Raiden takes them and the other surviving warriors to the Void, a secure location Shang cannot access. There, Kang laments Kung Lao's death and expresses his desperation. He goes on to say that Earthrealm is doomed without Lao, but Cole insists that the battle is not over and that they still have to fight. Using Lord Raiden's ability to teleport people anywhere in Earthrealm, he proposes a scheme to have them each defeat one of the Outworld warriors separately before saving Sub-Zero for last. Liu Kang is tasked with eliminating Cabal. Cabal uses his quickness to try to take the upper hand in this battle, and he succeeds in wounding Kang. However, the monk ultimately prevails and imprisons Cabal in a pit of black quicksand. Then he commands a fire dragon to devour him. After that, Sub-Zero takes Cole away, making the plan for everyone to fight Sub-Zero jointly ineffective. After Cole triumphs, Kang is welcomed back alone with the other champions. After Cole's wife and daughter are frozen in ice by Sub-Zero, Kang uses his fire skills to warm them up before Cole introduces his new friends to his family. Liu Kang then joins the rest of the party in seeing Lord Raiden evict Shang Tsung, after which he sends Cole to hunt for the next generation of champions. Watch me step by step. Because your heart is not in the battle, Cetrion. What does Liu Kang look like? Liu Kang made his debut as one of several Bruce Lee impersonators with a bare chest, black slacks, and white sneakers. To complement this, he usually has light white skin. He has a thin, muscular build in general. He is shown in Mortal Kombat 2 and later with a red headband, scruffy black hair and black kung fu leggings, spiked gauntlets, and kung fu shoes, while his upper body remained bare. This is one of the most constant designs in the series. In Mortal Kombat, he appears as a zombie. He develops a horrifying grey tinge on his deteriorating skin with the worst damage on his peeling face. He still wears his customary clothes, but he also wears a pair of Huan chains with hooks connected to his gauntlets, which Raiden gave him after he got corrupted. Liu Kang has become one of Quan Chi's revenants as of Mortal Kombat X and has subsequently become a dark version of himself, corrupted by the Netherrealm. While he retains the other character's distinctive flashing yellow veins and shining eyes, he now wears a black, armored costume composed of steel, leather, and dragon skin. His hair has grown past his shoulders, and he wears it in a ponytail. While he still wears his distinctive headgear, it's damaged. As Emperor of the Netherrealm, he wears spiked armor and the usual trappings of a Netherrealm denizen. In Mortal Kombat 11, he wears a white Chinese short-sleeved shirt with a black vest outside of the competition. What makes Liu Kang so deadly? Liu Kang has proved to be one of the most formidable characters in the series' history, winning every Mortal Kombat tournament he's participated in. Liu Kang is a master of agility, acrobatics, and martial arts, albeit the latter is more prevalent. These abilities were honed throughout his time with Bo Rai Cho. Kang meditates on a daily basis in order to preserve and increase his strength. Liu Kang appears to age slowly due to his repeated role as Mortal Kombat champion. Liu Kang is frequently connected with the element of fire, which manifests itself in the form of firebound missiles. He appears to have some control over it since the fireballs occasionally assume dragon-like shapes, and he's even employed the element for finishes. Kang also seems to be capable of shape-shifting, transforming himself into a Chinese dragon with a serpentine body and little limbs. The form is also revealed to have fire-breathing skills in Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks, which is most likely related to his ability to use fire. In Mortal Kombat X, Liu Kang is shown to be able to manage his yin and yang energies using the dualist variant, generating searing hot light blasts with healing powers in his yin state while firing dark energy blasts and strengthening himself in his yang form. Aside from his blazing missiles, he possesses various elemental talents. He can also set fire to his limbs, adding fire damage to his strikes and teleport in a flash of flames. Liu Kang can also transform a person's energy into a fireball. In Mortal Kombat 11, Liu Kang's ghost has absorbed and mastered his old sire Shinnok's mysticism to improve his own combat power having used it to take the soul of his previous self to enhance himself even more. He can also summon and control a giant winged dragon of fire to aid him in battle. As per Mortal Kombat 11, Kronika twisted the timelines to pit him and Raiden against one another out of fear for their combined strength. When Raiden transforms Liu Kang into a fire god by fusing his own essence with both of his past and current identities, all of her worries come true. Due to this fusion, Liu Kang's abilities have been greatly enhanced. He can now easily dive bomb a whole legion of the realm demons and cause a massive explosion upon contact. Along with the ability to fly, he also acquired Raiden's control.
control over lightning and thunder. Talking about a few of his signature moves, we've got to talk about the flying kick, which was a non-fatal signature move in the first game. Kang uses this move to great effect to defeat many warriors like Shang Tsung. His first fatality was called Deadly Uppercut, where Liu Kang easily uppercuts his opponent after doing a twist. The opponent isn't formally killed until a stage fatality is utilized, and this rule was made to demonstrate Kang's trust in the Shaolin Wei. However, the opponent in Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks disintegrates upon impact with the ground. Marvelous Verdict, like Sub-Zero, Scorpion and Raiden, Liu Kang is synonymous with Mortal Kombat. The series' first protagonist was always competing outside his weight division. The first four games were devoted to his defeating Goro, Shang Tsung, Shao Kahn and Shinnok. In canon, Shang Tsung and Quan Chi set him up for an ambush, and later Raiden accidentally fried him in his palm. In fact, he and Raiden repeatedly fought throughout that time. This shows how tough the character is. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. You match me step by step.